At one point, I was a post-trib rapture believer because I figured that I wouldn't be disappointed that way. Then I began to study the rapture, and post-trib did not up for me anymore. Then I looked into mid-trib, entertained that for a while, and it did not up for me either. I was almost afraid to adopt the pre-trib view because it seemed too good to be true, yet here I am. The pre-trib view is the one that makes sense to me. I will share why in this video. Let me say this before I begin. A believer's end times views have no bearing on their salvation. Eschatology, which is the study of the end times, has nothing to do with a person's salvation. Once you believe in Jesus Christ for your salvation, you are sealed by God. Sealed and rapture ready. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some argue that the pre-trib rapture view is just too new to be considered viable. Critics will point to the origin of the modern pre-tribulation view and credit John Darby with its founding. This is a false claim. When Augustine began spiritualizing the Bible, his view of a non-literal interpretation of the Bible took hold of the church until the Renaissance, ignoring the premillennial and pre-tribulation rapture views in favor of amillennialism. Amillennialism does not take the Bible literal, but symbolically. They believe that there will be no millennial kingdom, the A before it meaning no. We also have a view called premillennialism, which takes the millennial reign of Christ literally, but does not hold the pre-trib view. Then we have postmillennialism, which believes that there is no coming apostasy, and that the church alone is responsible for cleaning up the world and saving the world before Christ returns at the end of the millennium to take control of his kingdom. Have you had a look at the world lately? If this view is true, we are doing a horrible job at it. I've come to believe in dispensationalist premillennialism, also known as dispensationalism. This viewpoint believes that Christ will rapture his church before the tribulation, and that the tribulation is meant for Israel's redemption. This viewpoint takes the millennium literally. Dispensationalism can be traced back to the time of the early church fathers, Barnabas, Papias, Justin Martyr, Arrhenius, Tertullian, Hippolytus, Cyprian, and Lactantius all wrote of the imminent return of Jesus Christ, which is the central point for the pre-tribulation rapture view. Dispensationalism puts focus on the nation of Israel. Once the church is raptured, God will begin to work with the nation of Israel. Many Israelites and Gentiles will come to faith in Christ before his return on the Mount of Olives at his second coming but this time is really meant for the nation of Israel. During the Reformation of the Church, which began in the 16th century, writers such as Joseph Mead, Increase Mather, Peter Girio, Philip Doddridge, John Gill, James McKnight, Thomas Scott, and Morgan Edwards all wrote concerning the rapture occurring separate from the Second Coming. Even in the more modern church, those like William Witherby were before John Darby in support of the view. In 2 Thessalonians 2, the church in Thessalonica was afraid due to a rumor that they had entered the tribulation and had somehow missed the rapture. The Apostle Paul assured them that the Antichrist would not be revealed until the restrainer was taken out of the way, so that the man of lawlessness could be revealed. In other words, the church would be removed prior to this. John Darby did not invent the pre-trib rapture. He supported it. The Bible describes the rapture and second coming as two different events. In the rapture, believers meet Christ in the clouds. At Christ's second coming, he touches down on the Mount of Olives with the raptured saints behind him. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-54 Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 
The last trumpet in this passage is not the final trumpet judgment in Revelation 11.15. Those who hold the mid-trib view say that we will be raptured at the last trumpet judgment in Revelation 11.15. Yet, the first seal in Revelation 6.1, which looses the conqueror on the white horse, starts the beginning of the judgments with the first of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. God's wrath has begun. Wrath which believers in Christ are not appointed to. I will get to this shortly. The rapture trumpet and the seventh trumpet of judgment are not the same. The seventh trumpet of judgment comes long after the first seal is broken, 13 judgments later. There are 114 references to trumpets in the Bible, as trumpets in the Jewish culture are commonly used. The context clearly shows that the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15.52 is blown for believers, whereas the seven trumpets in Revelation 8.9 and 11 are sounded for unbelievers. The Revelation trumpet judgments are not for the church. We will be out of here already. 1 Thessalonians 4.16-18 For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. The last verse says comfort one another with these words. This hardly sounds like we the church will be going through the severity of God's judgments while we are watching and waiting for his coming in the clouds. The second coming. Zechariah 14, 2-5 For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the house is rifled, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two, from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach Azal. Yes, you shall flee, as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints with you. The raptured saints will return with Jesus Christ. Christ will set down on the Mount of Olives with us behind him. Jude 14. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. The rapture is described as occurring at any time without warning. Believers are watching and waiting now as the birthing pains are very evident and Bible prophecy is coming true right before our eyes. Matthew 24, 42 Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Jesus will come when nobody expects it. If we weren't raptured pre-trib and were to go through the tribulation, we would have the timings from the Bible to work from, and therefore be more able to calculate the date or at least get a real good idea of when it would be. It just doesn't add up. Paul describes the rapture as a mystery in 1 Corinthians 15.51, and the 1699 Geneva Bible translates it to secret. The second coming, on the other hand, is preceded by many events, such as the rise of the Antichrist, a treaty with Israel, the rebuilding of the Jewish temple, as well as plagues and judgments and persecutions destroying most of the world's population. The book of Revelation reports these events as occurring during the seven-year tribulation, which Revelation states precede the second coming. Because the rapture could happen at any moment without warning, and the second coming is preceded by so many signs, the rapture and second coming are therefore two different events. Israel is not the church, and the church is not Israel. A believer in Christ becomes a member of the church, whether Jew or Gentile, as found in Romans 1.16. But a member of the church does not become Israel. 
God's promise to Israel as a people and nation are not the same as for the bride of Christ, the church, we as believers. The tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, and the 70th week of Daniel are synonymous with one another and are for Israel's redemption as the church age will be finished. It will be the time for God to focus on Israel's redemption. Jeremiah 37 describes the tribulation as the time of Jacob's trouble. How awful that day will be. None will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In the book of Matthew, Jesus explains to his Jewish followers what it will be like during the tribulation. Also, Revelation 12 describes a woman who gives birth and flees due to persecution during the tribulation. This context shows the woman is Israel. Armageddon will be the world armies gathered against Israel. Two-thirds of the Jewish people will be killed. Zechariah 8b, that two-thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left in it. These texts show that the tribulation is meant for the redemption of the Jewish people. Why are the Jews the object of persecution during the tribulation? The Jews have to be brought low so that they finally call out to their Messiah. Jesus was speaking to the Jews in the next two verses. Matthew 23, 39 For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Luke 13.35 See, your house is left to you desolate, and assuredly I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The tribulation, then, is used for Israel's redemption and for the punishment of unbelievers. The church does not fit into this scenario, and therefore are already raptured out before the tribulation. The church has already been redeemed through the blood of Christ and spared. The tribulation is not for the church. It is the time for the Jews to finally realize that the Messiah already came. The leaven of the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes will finally be dissolved after 2,000 years. The 70 weeks of Daniel, Daniel 9.25a Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The seven weeks plus sixty-two weeks makes sixty-nine weeks. The sixty-ninth week of Daniel wrapped up when Christ died on the cross. There has been a long pause between the sixty-ninth and seventieth week, which has been the church age for about two thousand years. The 70th week has not yet happened. The 70th week being one week of seven days signifying seven years or the seven-year tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. Believers in Christ during the church age, represented by the Church of Philadelphia, are promised in Revelation 3.10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.9 Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Ephesians 5.6 Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Colossians 3.4 When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Again and again, Scripture states the church is not meant to endure God's wrath. We are rescued before it. In the same way, Noah and his family were rescued before the flood, the pre-trib rapture. The mid-trib and post-trib views both contradict these scriptures of our rescue before the wrath of God. 
Well, the seven-year tribulation is occurring. The church waits with Jesus to follow him into the battle of Armageddon at the conclusion of the tribulation. This event is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19.14 identifies the church in their fine linen, white and clean, which will be given to us during the judgment of the just. The church and Jesus' angelic forces follow him into his second coming to the earth, but only Jesus himself will engage in battle, and with a word from his mouth, he will defeat the nations that have gathered in Armageddon against Jerusalem. I have heard it said that those who believe in the pre-trib rapture view are weak. It has been said that we are overly hopeful and that we just want an escape. Well, yes, I am hopeful for an escape through my blessed hope, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are the bride of Christ, and we have already been made clean in God's eyes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are already on board with him, sealed and rapture ready, watching and waiting. Do you really think he will punish us for this? Do you really think that he would put his bride through his wrath? I certainly don't.